Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the uh, second part of a neural network. So last week we saw um, uh, one layer neural network. So this um, second part will be focused on uh, the uh, just an introduction uh, of the remaining uh, more uh, advanced type of neural network. Uh, which is multi-layer neural networks, uh, convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks. Um, so uh, just uh, uh, to uh, recap uh, a bit, so we have this model, this is our model function, and so usually here we have just x instead x is now a function of x which contains weights uh, and a, basically a hidden model okay and this is when we have just one layer so just one a sub k just one multi-layer neural network means that we have more than one a sub k so we have more layers. Uh, and so what's happened here is, is uh, this is our model function. And so the output layer, our output, the aim of our output is to be able to replicate our input layer. Okay, in order to do this, uh, we basically apply, uh, so in general, we use to estimate the betas, which are the coefficients, okay? So now uh, what we apply are models inside the model, okay? Uh, and what's happened here is that our input layer goes on, uh, the first in the layer, apply a model, attempt to uh, meet the lowest level of errors. Okay, it's like that we have our first uh, output here, uh, but then goes forward and apply the things again. Most, most pro, more, it can be possible to apply different um, activation functions. Uh, and then again, attempt to find the lowest error uh, as possible and then release the output. Obviously, if you have more layers, this goes forward and forward and forward, calculating the, the least amount of error to achieve the, uh, the, the, the highest levels of of perfection, okay? So in fact, it's used for image recognition uh, and many things that it performs well, very well. Okay, so just to give you uh, a little overview uh, of this tree, uh, the other one is convolutional neural network, which um, is usually uh, for, as I mentioned, classifying images, they are multi layers, okay? But now we have a convolution, which means multiplication of, of probabilities. So they found a probability and then passed to another layer. Then these two probabilities were multiplied together and then passed to another layer or something similar. So I'm not, I'm not I'm, I don't want to, uh, I'm not, uh, so I'm just getting inside this world. So, but, uh, uh, you know, you have a convolution of uh, uh, layers. And uh, we're going to have specific features and distinguishing each particular object class. So the network first identified low level of features in the input image. And then these features are then combined to form a higher level of features. Okay, so that just uh, as I said, step by step, find the lowest error and go to another step. So the convolutional filters 
determine whether a local feature is present in the image or not. So we can have uh, a parameter K, which are different convolution filters in the first hidden layer, and typically apply uh, the application is of the activation function is within the ReLU function, type of function. Uh, then we have pooling layers, uh, which reduce the size of the image by a factor of two in each direction and provide some location invariance. Pooling means grouping. So they identify uh, a factor uh, and group the data in a way to uh, basically um, identify the uh, uh, influencing uh, factor uh, within the, 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 the data. Okay, so this is, this is we, we go back uh, into these definitions again. Uh, uh, then we have a recurrent neural network and we, we are going to have a look at the time series case study uh, for, for the recurrent neural network. So the, uh, this is a predictive model used for sequential data in nature. So as for example, even in nature or uh, in time series like data from the stock exchange, so they are sequential in time, for example, and this, this gives you an idea of what is this, what is recurrent neural network. Okay, so we have hidden layers as well as a sequence. There might be more, and they uh, we have, uh, uh, let's say that this is one layer with some lags. These are in time series, for example, the lags are, um, going back or forward in time of one period, and there will be one lag, more period, two lags. So, uh, and uh, so, for example, going back in, uh, in time of one day or two days or one month or two months, it depends by uh, what type of um, uh, time frame is uh, provided within the data. I'm, I'm focusing on time series for this recurrent neural network. So we make up our mind of what's happening there. And uh, each activation function feeds into the output layer and produce a prediction, okay, for, for our response. In this case, we have this type of, uh, um, uh, so it, it's always um, the, our model function, okay? But we specify this as um, uh, O sub L as a prediction because it depends by the, the layer, uh, sorry, the lags. Uh, and so this is our loss function, obviously. So a response minus our uh, estimations. And uh, this, uh, um, it's, um, uh, an image of what can happen. So it's uh, uh, recurrent. So find something that uh, calculate the error, but it stays there and it's, it's more sequential instead of going uh, in, in all directions. Okay, as, uh, as the other type of um, neural networks. Okay, so uh, this is uh, what I wanted to, to mention here. Okay, so uh, going back to uh, what is a multi-layer neural network, okay? This, this network in the, now I, I give you like a bit of introduction, going a bit more in deep of what are they effectively. Okay, we have a multi-layer neural network and these represent fundamental building blocks in the field of deep learning. Okay, so we have one layer, it's not, so general is multi-layer, a neural network, okay? 
So a day uh, consists of multiple hidden layers, as, as I said, and this architecture enables them to learn intricate re uh, uh, representation of the of data, okay, and release accurate predictions. So the power of multi-layer neural network lies in the capability of approximate almost any function. And um, so uh, with just a single hidden layer uh, containing a large number of neurons, they can effectively model complex relationship between input data and output predictions. But what's happened here is that the learning process become more manageable when we employ more hidden layers, okay? Because as I said, it passed through the first layer, calculate the error, then uh, the, if, if you have more layers, it can apply the procedure again to reduce the error. That make it sort of making a selection, okay? Usually, this multi layer of neural network are used in natural language processing or, for example, for uh, autonomous driving uh, and uh, those things. Like that. Why convolution, convolutional neural networks are specialized type of network um, for, for example, computer vision, uh, understanding visual data such as images and videos. Okay, and they do the CNN with exceptional accuracy. Okay, when uh, um, uh, a convolutional neural network uh, uh, is set. Uh, They have the ability to um, identify spatial structure of the, the, the visual data, okay? Because of the, they apply a sort of probability, okay? So they have uh, uh, applied filters or kernels to extract local features from the input. Uh, and, and so they, this feature are able to detect capture uh, uh, the, the, the pattern uh, of this, uh, uh, for example, the images, okay? And then apply pooling layers. So they group, uh, so then down sample the features and extract what they, they want, okay? So now this is uh, mm, just to going a bit more in depth. And now we focus on a bit of practice, okay? So recurrent neural network emerged as a groundbreaking type of neural network, and they are capable for, of modeling sequential data in particular, um, because they are sequential, and capturing temporal dependencies as well. Okay, this makes them highly effective in analyzing and um, generating sequences such as natural language text, speech, time series data. So we talked last week about feed forward, the function feed forward, okay, which is, uh, uh, I'm not going back to that, but now, uh, we have a feedback connections in, in this case, okay? So um, that allows information to persist over time. Let's have a look at a uh, case study, okay? See what's happened with, with both, Kiras and Torch. And uh, what, what uh, is this, um, what is this? Happen? But before uh, that, um, okay, you can always see my Chrome that I'm switching between uh, pages. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah. Hello. Yes, we could see yes. the code on the other tab. Okay. 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 Um. What I wanted to uh, uh, mention, uh, what is it? Uh, it's here. Basically, uh, 
this is the uh, one layer, okay, a single layer. Um, here, what uh, I show is this. So we have seen this uh, for one layer, okay? So when we apply Kiras, we use a model sequential. This is not by any means uh, only recurrent neural network, okay? This is a model sequential in the meaning that anytime you run it, it, it tells you that you, the many times you run it before, okay? You run it first time, it model sequential two times, model sequential two, model sequential three, and so on and so forth. Um, so this is the way Kiras deals with uh, deep with neural networks, okay, of different uh, layers. For, for now, this is uh, just one layer, okay. Why, why torch, okay, uses another, uh, that we go back to here, okay, uh, uses another uh, syntax. So we have uh, a function which is neural network module, we initialize and then we, fo we go forward, okay? This is the syntax of torch, okay? Uh, and this is the syntax of Kiras. Right, okay. So now going back to our um, uh, is case study. So here, our case study is a, the time series. You can find this in, uh, um, in the website uh, of, the, of the book. Uh, I put uh, uh, Torch first because it is the, the, the first one I have uh, here. But obviously you have the book uh, and you can find the resource uh, for this. In the in the book, okay, just a, uh, a little pause to um, add this information in the chat and uh, thinking. <laughs> hmm. And have some uh, this Kira's website. Mm. And you have the Kira's. This is everything. So all the case study they uh, mentioned in the in the chapter. Uh, what we do uh, today is the, what is it? Okay, is the last one, uh, recurrent neural network time series. So basically we extract um, mini series of uh, some inputs. Uh, this is what's happening in, in the video. And then define the lines. So we have a time series. So we have a time frame, something that happened within time. And in this case, we are uh, talking about stock exchange, New York stock exchange data. Uh, and then uh, we we what we do is, is we set some lines. Okay, so we are going uh, to to set the model on a specific point in time before or after, generally set before, because you have a, a time series that stops at some point in time. And so when you model it to predict the future, you go back a bit in, uh, in time, and this is the lag. It depends by the time frame that is set, if it is within months, quarters, or days, or weeks, or years, you go back of one period, that, that would be one lag two periods, two lines, and so on and so forth. So we, and then that would be 
uh, our our information uh, on uh, on which we base our uh, model to predict the future. We cannot take everything. Okay, we take everything, but then we use that to to do some work. So this is uh, the lag. Okay. And uh, our target is Y, as always, our response variable. And uh, in the case of, uh, um, for example, uh, New York Stock Exchange, we are interested in this uh, log, uh, the, the log of the volume of the uh, return. So, um, and um, uh, what is it? So uh, we uh, we have uh, in our data the log of the volume, the Dow Jones returns, and the log of the volatility, and they are set at time t minus the the first lag, at time t minus the lag plus one, and then so on. Uh, and each value of time t makes a separate uh, x and y pair. What we are using is, if you do time series, you use the ARIMA model, okay? So which is auto ARIMA, so auto regression model, and MA, which is the moving average. So now to fit recurrent uh, neural network, we first try a basic autoregressive linear model. And then we apply recurrent linear network to compare the two, okay? The difference is that a recurrent neural network process is uh, as a, uh, an underneath process we called flattening, okay? So, I mean, we don't use the flattening because it's included already in the model. Why? Why we do, uh, autoregressive simple models. Um, we, we so uh, we specify this. Okay, let's go and uh, see what's happened. Okay, um, we have uh, uh, the hidden layer, and uh, we basically pass through this in the layer to transfer the information along the sequence and then introduce an additional uh, level of nonlinearity. As I said last time, you need to set up the thing, a virtual environment, uh, and then lo load the library, load the book library for the data, and these are our data. So we have a New York Stock Exchange. We have a uh, uh, day of the week, Dow Jones returns, uh, the logarithm of the volume, the volatility. And so if they are uh, train or testing, uh, this is already uh, that, um, ready to use data. Okay, so in order to use, uh, um, we need to have a matrix to use to to make um, our model. So we need to transform our data into a data matrix. Okay, there there may be other ways, but let's focus on what they did in the book. Uh, and so they uh, select three um, um, these three uh, vectors and make a data matrix. You can see this is the output. Uh, and then uh, select the, the train. Um, this is X data. Then they select from the original data set what are the train uh part of the set and uh, uh, scale this matrix and then okay i have 
this is train, which is are the just the row numbers, so the index. Okay. Uh, this is our matrix scaled, so centered, and so we have mean is zero. They all because you see that uh, they they have a different. Uh, this is a logarithmic, uh, for example. So this is not so. Uh, they are different units. So if you scale this matrix, you have everything um, between zero and one. Okay. So make a function to create uh, lags for D3 time series. Okay. So the down joint returns, the volume, and the volatility. Uh, this function is basically what it uh, allows you is to uh, begin fed by x and uh, the default as a k equals to one. What is the k that we mentioned? Okay. Is the value of the uh, of the parameter in the recurrent neural networks that we use um, in particular. Okay. So these uh, are the, the row numbers. This is the pad. So we set the matrix um, and then we bind the code. What this function does is calculating the lag. So we have our matrix. This is the number of k are the lags, okay? It's the parameter that accept by the model as the lag. This is, we, we calculating, for example, this set to one, as a one lag. And so our matrix um, is made of one, and then what we do is we row bind this one to the, the data that we provide. Okay. So we basically shift the data of one. Okay. So we, we said the now. We we'll see what's happened. So then going back to uh, X data, it's our data. Okay, these are X data, these are our data. Okay, we make uh, this is a lead reprocessing part. We make um, auto regressive data frame. Uh, the log of the volume is selected, and so then we set the lags lag one lag two lag three and so on the data by one by two and how how it looks so basically this is uh, um, you cannot see it very well maybe it's better if i jump into r Okay, so as you can see, this is uh, uh, our, uh, now I made uh, a selection, okay? But if I have a look at this, uh, this is uh, um, our data frame with the lag. So really, you see that um, I have lag one uh, down Jones, this is uh let's have a look at the uh log uh volume because i have the um this um the the original data here as you can see the lag one what does this is the value 
this is the observed data and it's shifted by one. Okay. And so the others. But now we are focusing on, on the volume. Okay. Okay, so uh, we select some um, data, uh, some columns, and then we apply uh, our um, uh, indexes to select just the part of the observed data, which are the training uh, set, training part. Okay, and then we start modeling. Okay, so we apply this autoregressive uh, model, indicating that the model uses the dependent relationship between current data and past values. So we fit uh, a linear autoregressive model to the training data using the LM function, and then we predict. So basically, we use the LM function on the log volume and all the other uh, data on uh, our, which is, they, they are just, um, uh, so this is our data because um, this is already, was already been done. And so we apply uh, the log uh, on, on this data. The uh, summary, so I, I, this run very fast. And so we have a, a, a result of the, the things. We can see that the, the estimate says that uh, for example, the returns of the down joints in one period, it's, in, it's positive. So influencing uh, our volume, log, log of volume positively. So as soon as this uh, increases, the other increase, and so on and so forth, all the others. We have some uh, statistically, statistical significance for uh, some and less for the others. So for example, lag two down Jones is less significant than lag one and so on. So you can uh, have a look at this thing. Then we have uh, uh, the residual uh, standard error, the ad adjusted that square, which is uh, just 57%. So not very fantastic, but uh, let's go forward and, and make a prediction. So if we do a prediction, um, and then we use this, uh, we calculate the variance. I don't know if you are practical with base R, but basically, uh, this is uh, not training, so we are taking the testing part of the data set and we apply the variance. So we have uh, the variance, which is one. And then uh, we calculate the R square, calculated. And so we can see that this is about 41. So what we do now is to refit this model, including day of the week. Okay, so we apply another uh, data frame and we set the day of the week. And this is the result. So we have the day of the week here on this data frame. Reapply the model. Uh, and then uh, we found a little difference on R square, which is now 46 uh, instead of the 41. Okay, so this is base R. Now 
we would like to use um, Kiras. To use Kiras, uh, we need to reshape the data, uh, sequencing with some lags for each observation. This is specified here in the book. You can. Um, um, and so we reshape a bit uh, the data again, matrix, uh, array, and things in there. And so we have this dimension. And if you if you want to have a look at the things, that's interrupt me and we see. But then we apply the model Kiras, as we know, we have seen, we had just one layer. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, so uh, the layer is now layer simple recurrent neural network. Okay. And so we have uh, uh, units, 12, input shape, dropout, and recurrent dropout. These are parameters. I think that with time and experience, you decide which one to set. But we can even have a look. Um, what it says. And it says uh, fully connected recurrent neural network where the output is to be fed back to input. So um, you go back uh, and basically apply the lag. Okay. You shift uh, the things and let's see if you have some more information on. Um, external constant free cells. Um, and so um, you basically specify the initial state of recurrent neural network lay layers symbolically by calling them with the keyword argument initial state. And so, um, that, um, you specify some uh, inputs inside the layer simple neural network, and then again, um, as we saw in one layer, there is this layer dense units one. If we run this model, so this is like in study models. So basically the specification of the model, you're not fitting the model here. Okay, and here you see the specification of the model. Then you can, you need to compile the model and then you specify the optimizer. Okay, then you compile the model. This is generally in generics or in Kiras. In Kiras, uh, basically, you can see on generics as a generics compilation of the model. But um, here, basically, configure a Kiras model for training. Okay. Configure a Kiras model for training. You specify the optimizer. The optimizer is a string. Uh, the default is to uh, RMS uh, prop. And this is for most model. Okay, you have uh, uh, this is the optimizer, then you can specify the loss function and so matrix. 
So we specify the loss as M, say, M, MSE. And when you run, we saw this last time, so you run this and nothing happened. Uh, then you finally fit the model. So now the model is compiled and you fit it with uh, this one here, which is the data. Okay, in with training, this is what we have made here in the preprocessing. So basically a data matrix, and then we set to array, uh, array and et cetera. And so we fit the model on this data. Uh, uh, and then again, this is our data set, our frame. So we have two. We set the batch size, the epoch, and the validation data. So we have two data. Okay, one with lags, one without. So this one. Uh, these are lagged version of the time series going back to uh, L times uh, point. Okay, so finally, um, this is the result. So this is the, the plot of the fit, and we can see the training and the validation data. Um, ob obviously, th there is a, a certain uh, like difference uh, because the model needs to be uh, adjusted. So then if we predict this data and we calculate the R square, now we have a 52%. Uh, percent. This is a model of, with R square of 52%. So uh again uh we can do it better now with a non-linear autoregressive model uh here we have a layer dense a layer dropout and a layer dense we don't we are not using uh the layer simple recurrent neural network but we now we set a non-linear recurrent neural network. And so we have a layer dropout. So layer dense, layer dropout. We have the activation redo and those things. We compile the model. We do the history with two data sets. But this time it's X. Okay. which is this model matrix. Uh, and so we plot the history. We can see the two together. So uh, th there is slightly difference. This is uh, uh, non-linear, while this is linear. And so this one has an a square of no point no two four. And so, this is uh, the first with Kiras. Um, why with Torch? As I said, you apply this syntax. You have a neural nectar module, initialize the function, forward function. Uh, and so then you fit the model. I don't know if you. Uh, do you have any questions, maybe, before I jump into this one? Very, very quickly. Okay. 
uh, I see that uh, even even um, you know the the chapter is uh, huge, uh, full of information. Uh, I didn't mention uh, just a very low percentage of the chapter, but just to give you an overview of what's happening within uh, uh, new uh, deep learning. And obviously, when you do for work and you apply for or for research or for your analysis and you apply these things, you uh, as it, with tidy models, with uh, you know, you you find out with more practice practice how to apply theorems and uh, um, more precise, basically. Why we torch uh, the uh, installation, you know, uh, one is, is a little bit easier. Uh, and then uh, we are doing the same thing with torch, same uh, uh, introduction, same LM prediction, uh, R square and everything. But then we apply torch instead of Kira's. And this is the, the syntax, I, I say it again. We have a module with a initializing function and a forward function. Then once the model is set, uh, you do a full test setup, uh, which is, I think it's compiling the model, okay, uh, with the parameters optimizations to to optimize the parameters as the tally models we set the, the, the more specification within the workflow and uh, then we fit this model uh, on uh, two data sets and now this is required to be a list we have epochs, uh, data loaders, and so and here they found an R square of uh, about 40%. So then they are models, in Kiras, for example, they are models sequential. The more you run in, the more epochs, you see that this is epochs 30. But the more, uh, the highest is the level of epochs, the highest is the precision. Because I said, it runs uh, more times, calculate the errors and, and discard the things and go forward. And so uh, here is the, uh, the flattering thing with torch that I mentioned before when we do autoregressive models. And uh, it repeats the things again uh, to see the training and test um, the validation test to obtain an R square of 47 above. So this is what. Uh, basically a recurrent neural network is. Yes. 